Let us begin the story today with this masterpiece painting of the Impressionist School that provides a pastoral scene in the countryside with some figures enjoying the outdoors. It is a famous painting. Coquelicot by Claude Monet, painted in 1873. It resides nowadays in the Musée d'Orsay in Paris, France, which is temporarily closed because of COVID-19 pandemia. I am taping this particular video in April of 2021. When it opens again, uh, go and see it. It's a beautiful masterpiece painting uh, by Claude Monet. Now, when people see the painting, either in real life or the many different known images of it, uh, it's not difficult to say that everybody identifies there are two women, both of them ha have hats, there is one child with each one of them, one woman has a parasol, some people might miss that the other woman doesn't, but nobody will miss that this is a field of poppies. It's sort of the most prominent feature of this painting. It's very clear and the figures are walking down the hill. It's also very clear that there is a line of trees at the horizon. But when you ask the following question, how many people can actually tell how many windows are in the house? And when I ask my sister, she goes, wait a minute, what house? this house. So it is not necessarily seen very clearly, but when I point it to you, it's easy to count how many windows are in that house. But most everybody, when we see this painting, we don't really see the house. We see the whole painting. Let's move on to the deadly virus. It's SARS-CoV-2, the virus that causes COVID-19. So what is that our immune system sees when the virus infects our bodies? Well, this is what they see. It's like a sphere, like a small ball. And what you see there are basically the proteins that are exposed. And because the membrane protein is painted in gray, we tend to see it as less prominent than the red. But imagine, just imagine, I haven't found an image that does that, but imagine that the gray was the red and the red was gray. Then you realize that the most prominent protein that our immune system actually sees is the membrane protein. And there are many different elements in the membrane protein. Within the membrane protein, we have the envelope proteins that also stick out and our immune system might actually see them and identify them, same as some people saw the house or maybe some people just saw the parasol in the painting. There's very uh, few amounts of hemagglutinin also exposed in the surface. And of course, the spike protein. Everybody during the 2020 uh, year got to know this famous triangular shape protein that is the protein that gives the virus coronavirus their name. So in this spike protein is the one that our immune system must see and most specifically a piece of this spike protein that is the one that if the immune system blocks it, then the virus cannot spread and the infection is controlled. So that's what the immune system needs to see instead of seeing the whole picture of the virus or the membrane protein or even other areas of the spike protein. So what is happening with the immune system? Well, this is what happens when you get infected with the virus. Your cells, there's specific cells in the blood that can identify that virus, the virus sticks to them, and they actually identify it as what we call a danger signal. So then they process this virus inside these cells and they're able to present a signal to the T cell that tells the T cell that this is a danger signal. Now the T cell are really the key cells that orchestrate 
the immune responses. And many people know some subsets of T cells like the CD4s and the CD8s. It is important that these T cells are being given the signal by the antigen presenting cells that there is something there that they need to attack. So these T cells will actually produce the appropriate signaling that activates B cells. They differentiate into plasma cells and the plasma cells are the ones that are going to produce antibodies. Now, most of these antibodies are going to identify what the immune system saw at first from the virus. And as you, you know, most of the membrane proteins are not necessarily very important when our immune system blocks them, the virus could still spread. Now, by chance, a percentage of those antibodies to the virus could actually bind that spike protein in the region where it needs to be blocked so that the virus is controlled. And these are the people who recover faster after natural infection they have protective antibodies so not everybody who has been exposed to the virus will, will actually have protective antibodies and most importantly this t-cell activation will also produce a lineage of cells that will have the memory to react again with the virus when encountered with the virus again and this memory cell it's all dependent on the response, the original response from the individual. So if the individual actually did create the appropriate blocking antibodies to the spike protein, those memory cells will be very effective in preventing future um, disease. Now, we don't know in, in the April of 2021, we don't know how long this memory lasts. It depends in the immune system. We have sometimes very long-term memory, like for polio and other diseases. We have lifelong memory once we have created the appropriate antibodies. And in other cases, our memory, immunological memory, lasts only for a year, like for the flu, that we need to get yearly uh, vaccination because the memory does not last longer. With COVID-19, we don't know. So that's still under study. But going back uh, to the example that I had given, this is as uh, those few people who, when they see this particular painting for the first time, can actually identify the three windows in the house. Not everybody does that. Most everybody will not see the windows in the house. So most of the antibodies that are created in natural immunity will not be able to be blocking antibodies and effective in dealing with the disease. So the immune responses are idiosyncratic. What does this mean? Well, you know, I actually see it very similar to when people are walking in the museum and they see the paintings. Each person has a different experience and each person reacts differently to the same painting, even the same person may react differently to the same painting in different times of their life. They may see it first as teenagers and maybe they can come back when they are in the mid thirties or even when they're older. So the experience that we have uh, will vary uh, and it depends on many different environmental factors and also personal factors. So that's what happens also with the immune response. So when people are walking in the museum, they may actually see this painting for the first time and they may get, get a very good idea of the painting. So what happens? You create a memory. You create a memory of having seen this painting, but the memories are generalized. They are not specific. We do have selectivity for details depending on the moment when we saw it. Some people may be driven to the clouds, some people may be driven to the poppy, some people may be driven to the children in the painting. So this is very selective, uh, but it's really not all the details of the painting. And what's interesting is that this general, not specific memory can actually fool us. And we may actually see another painting by Monet 
with exactly the same title that has a lot of the same features. And we may actually think it's the same painting that we saw years ago when we saw the other painting. Or even we may see this painting that has a different title and was painted by Pierre-Auguste Renoir two years after Monet painted his poppy fields. And this has a lot of the elements that we might remember, but because the memory did not really clearly remember all of the details, we may think it's the same painting that we saw. But there's another condition where we might actually see the painting again, but we may have created no memory of it. And we may think we're seeing the painting for the first time. All of that can also happen with the immune response. What do I mean? I did explain when the first encounter and you do create a T cell activation and the T cell orchestrates an initial response to the COVID virus. But here's what happens. There might be another instance where the virus enters our system it's identified by the antigen presenting cells, but when they process the virus, they actually get a piece of the virus that is not recognized by the T cell. So there's no T cell activation. And by not having a T cell activated, there is no B cell response, there's no activation of B cells, and there's no antibodies. So basically, a lot of the people get very sick, they have very bad disease, and their immune system is not able to generate or mount an immune response to the virus at all because they're not processing this virus, they're not seeing the right thing from the virus. Now, in this circumstance, the B cells that originally were able to process the virus, even though they didn't get the appropriate piece of it, they can respond and they can produce antibodies and some of them uh, could be to the spike protein. But this lacks the memory. And by not having the memory, this is a short-lived response. So this is like walking in the hallway in the museum. You can actually see the painting and you remember seeing it for a very short period of time. Maybe you return to the same hall and see the painting a few days later. And you may actually have seen the windows from the beginning. So your immune system could have, just by chance, created the right antibodies. But because you don't have memory, you will not be protected against the virus. And you will not remember this painting when you come back maybe a year or two later. So the lack of memory is a very important thing in the immune system and when you appreciate art. So both in the painting and for the virus, if we really want to draw the attention to the house and the windows in the house, or draw the attention to the spike protein, what do we do? Well, we have to note, we have to make a, a note, we have to tell people what to see, and we have to tell the immune system also what they need to see. And that way they will not miss it when they see the whole. So how can we help the immune system to see the spike protein and react to it? Well, enter the vaccine that has given us hope. The vaccine is using the spike protein. The vaccine does not use the whole virus. And let me just tell you, there's other videos in my channel that explain the many different platforms or technologies that are used for vaccines but eventually all of them are predicated on the same idea of presenting the spike protein, the, the important piece to the immune system from the beginning. So once the immune system sees the spike protein and these antigen presenting cells process them, they now have the appropriate signal to the T cell because we have forced that signal into the signal that is identified by the T cells. The T cells will get activated and they will produce a B cell response with activation of the B cells, differentiation into plasma cells and antibody production. Now, 
these antibodies are only going to be to the spike protein because these B cells have seen nothing else. They have only seen the spike protein. So there's no confusion here. There's no images that have additional proteins. It's just a spike. However, the virus has a spike. So when they see the virus, they will identify the spike protein and they will bind it. That's why the vaccination produces more effective responses in terms of the immune system rather than natural immunity. And that's why the chances of people getting the right antibodies are much, much higher than with natural disease. In addition, this T cell activation creates the memory. And this memory, again, it's against the spike protein that will identify the virus when it enters. So this is like giving people this image only and telling them, you know, when you go see the painting, this is what you need to find. This is the particular house that you need to see in the painting. So you are prompting people to what they need to memorize. And that's exactly the same as just giving the immune system the spike protein. So when people see the full painting, they know they need to find that house and they see it because you've told them to see it. So it's the same as with the immune system. We have told the immune system to just see the spike protein and they identify it. So for further uh, information, please, you know, consult other sources. I try to make these explanations uh, available for all audiences and um, very simplified. I didn't want to put a lot of complicated chemistry or immunology so that everybody understands why vaccines are really the hope to control this pandemic. And please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like this uh, video, you can check other videos in my playlist specifically for the COVID-19 and vaccination. Thank you very much. Stay safe and healthy.